In this video, we are going to summarize integration by looking at exam style questions. You will find this on page 357 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook Y equals MX plus C to success. Exam style questions. So this is a typical example that you will find in the examination. The diagram shows part of the curve, there's the function, and a point P. That is the point. There's the point P. Okay. I just want to first clean it. Okay, and then try again. Okay. Lying on the curve. The line PQ, this PQ, intersects the x-axis at 8 and 0. Okay. Show that PQ is a normal to the curve. Now, can you still remember normal means that it will always be perpendicular. I'm going to do it all right. If that is the tangent, just make it. Then this normal, if it's a normal, it must make an angle of 90 degrees. Okay, let's start. So we are back at normal. So can you remember, we're first going to differentiate to find the gradient function and then substitute the x-coordinate of the point P to find the gradient of the curve at P. That's what we... So we are first... And, and remember... In, especially in exam type of examples, you will work with differentiation and integration. So make sure that you know differentiation also very well. Okay, so there's the function. I'm getting it ready uh, to differentiate. So if I differentiate, it's the chain rule. I could actually write here to you the chain rule. It's where we differentiate the outside, that's what we did there, subtract 1, and then multiply by differentiating the inside. That's what we did. Okay. And then after we did that, it's negative a half, so that's why we bring it down, and 4 divided by 2, that will be that 2. Okay. This is the derivative function. Now, to find the gradient at that point P, I'm going to substitute the x value of the point. So if I substitute x is 6, then I get it's 2 over 5. But remember, that's the gradient of the tangent. Ooh, I want to even keep my colors. That is the gradient of the tangent. But I know that the normal is perpendicular to the tangent. So I remember this rule. So I take this, I take the reciprocal, and um, I multiply by negative 1 or change the sign. So it will be negative 5 over 2. Now, I'm going to find the gradient of between this point, the, the gradient of the point between P and Q. Now, I just difference in Y, difference in X. Uh, if you want to make, this is point 2, then okay, let's just make, this is X2, X, um, Y1. <laughs> no, why 2? This is point 2, then everything is 2. And if this is point 1, then everything is 1. And I just substitute there. It's 5 minus 0 and 6 minus 8. And I get exactly the same. So therefore, PQ is a normal to the curve. Okay. Now, the next one. Find showing all necessary working the exact volume of the revolution obtain when the shaded region is rotated 360 degrees about the x-axis. Now, if you look at this picture, so I, I, I always like to show it on the original in the videos, because sometimes I'm afraid you don't see the correct... So what I actually did in, in this picture, I was taking... And I just made a straight line. Okay. So... I'm going to actually break it up into two parts. So I find the area underneath the curve for this one, and I find the area of this one. Now, this one is a curve, and this one, and remember, it's volume, it's volume. So this one is a cone, okay? And then I just add it up. 
Okay, that was one way. Another way which you could have done also is to work with the straight line and then to work between the point 8 and 5 and then just work out the area of that one. I think I did that in the teacher's guide um, of an example. Okay, so let's start. I first find the volume between 6 and 0 of this part. Uh, what did I make it all red? Okay, and it's it's going to be the curve, and I don't have, but there is the curve, do you see? And don't forget pi, it's volume, and don't forget to square. And the best will be, okay, because it's a square root, so if you square a square root, or it's out of the root, a half times two, the square root just disappear, or the half just disappear. And then what is the volume for the area of uh, the volume of a cone? It's going to be area of a circle times height. So the area of a cylinder, but it's a third of it. And then I'm just going to substitute. And then after I did, because there's an x and an x, I know that will become zero. And I substitute and I add it up. And that will be my volume. Okay. I want you to stop the video and I want you to do try now 40 and again you can continue the video as soon as you are finished. Okay, the first thing that if I look at this picture I will see this is straight line, this is straight line and this a curve. Okay, so let's read it. The diagram shows part of the curve, this is the curve, the gold. The straight line y equals 3x plus 1 uh, cuts the y-axis at 0 and 1 and the curve at 1 and, and 4. The line y is equal to 1 cuts the curve at 2 and 1. Now, this is very important. If you look, you will see in the previous example there was not a space almost. It was towards the x-axis, but now there's an extra line. So we're still going to divide this area. But don't forget that it's not up to the x-axis. We are also, and I, I want to highlight this, that you, we don't forget, we are working also with this line. Okay, now, the first question is just the area. Now again, I want to break it up. I want to call this area 1. And I'm going to call this area 2. Okay. I still want you to see that this area is, is a triangle. So I can do it with integration. But I think it's better just to work out the area just making use of the triangle. But in the teacher's guide you will see I also did it with integration. Okay. But in this video I'm just going to follow the easy way. Working with the triangle and in that one I must use integration because there's a curve. This was a straight line. That's why I could work with a triangle. Okay, so let's start. Number A. Now, the first thing is if I'm going to say area, let's call it 1. Now, it's going to be this triangle. Now, what is the area of a triangle? It's just half base times height. So, basically, if I'm going to do this one, it's just going to be half. And now, what is the base? Now, can I just do a few dimensioning. This is 1, so if this is going down, this is 1, okay, and this is 0. So, the, the and, and don't forget, if this is 1, then this one there will be 4, okay, and it's between 1 and, so this will be 3. So, this is 1, so I'm just substitute in the place of the base, I substitute 1, in the place of the height between 4 and 1, it's going to be 3. So if I simplify that, it's 1.5 or 1.5 units square. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Now, if I look at area 2. Let's get my pen correct. Area 2. Now, 
don't forget, it's not towards the x-axis. So it will be, if I'm looking at this one, it's going to be, it's a curve, do you see? So it's the area under the curve, subtract the straight line. Do you see? So I will take the area, because if you take the area under the curve, can I just show you, and I want to use another color. The area under the curve between will be up to here. That will be the whole. But then I subtract the straight line. So I'm going to say um, area curve minus area. I'm going to move it up a little bit. I just want to clean the F. Area straight line. Okay, so that is going to give me, I'm just going to put the equal here. So I'm going to take the area of the curve. Now what is the area of the curve? The area of the curve is y equals 4 over x squared. And we always bring the x up to the numerator. And what is as the straight line? Don't forget, the straight line is just y equals 1, because it's cutting at 1. So if I'm going to do that, I'm going to say 4x minus 2 minus the straight line, so curve minus straight line, and I'm integrating to x. So if I'm going to, oh, and don't forget, it's between... It's between, what is this value here? 2 and 1. Don't forget that. So if I'm integrating now, I'm going to say 4. If I add 1, I get negative 1. And I divide negative 1. And then I just put an x. And it's between 2 and 1. I prefer, and I'm going to do it here, um, just to simplify it a little bit, take the x down again. So it's going to be negative 4 over x minus x. I think that's going to be easier to work with. Okay, so if I substitute, I'm going to say uh, negative 4 over 2 minus 2, subtract. Um, this is going to be negative 4 over 1 minus 1 and that is going to be negative 2 minus 2 minus negative, oh sorry my pin, negative 5. So this is going to be negative 4 plus that 5 and that is just going to be 1 unit squared. So the total shear strength, okay, therefore, total shaded area is equal to 1.5 plus 1, and that's equal to 2.5 or 2.5 units squared. Okay, let's look at number B. The volume generated when this region is rotated through 360 degrees about the x-axis. Now, due to the fact that it's not ending on this, I've, the best will be not to work with a cone, but to rather work just with integration. Okay, so I'm just going to say these two parts. It's again volume. And that is going to be pi, don't forget pi. And it's going to be between 1 and 0. And it's going to be the straight line, 3x plus 1. Don't forget to square. And don't forget, it's, it's the straight line minus the straight line. And that straight line is just 1. And I square it again. Oh, pin. And then I integrate to x. So the best will be to just simplify this quickly first. So if I'm squaring this, 
square the first term, so it's going to be 9x squared, multiply with each other, multiply 2, 6x plus 1, minus 1. So basically this two is going to cancel out. Okay, so if I'm going to integrate, keep your pi, then it's going to be 9x3, add 1, divide 3, plus 6x2, divide 2. And that cancelled, and it's 1 and 0. Okay. Then I'm just going to, this is just becoming, oh, this is, <laughs> I'm going to simplify just because it's so nice. So this is going to be 3x to the power of 3 plus also 3x to the power of 2 and 1 and 0. Okay, sometimes it's just easier to simplify it first. And if I substitute now, I'm going to put first 1. And then I'm going to put 0. And then I'm going to put pi. And this is 3 plus 3, so that's 6, minus 0. And that is just going to give me 6 pi. That is for that, if I rotate that little part there. Okay, let's move up. I'm not done. Now I'm going to find uh, what will make it yellow. Volume 2, and that will give me also pi, but now, and I, I have to just move it uh, first back. And I just show you, it's between 2 and 1, and it's the curve minus still that line. Okay, so I can write it here already. So it's between 2 and 1, and it's the curve. Okay, but be, be careful, what is the curve? Can you still remember? Um, okay, let me just move it down, let you see the curve. There's the curve. Is it in that sketch? Yes, there it is. There's the curve. So it's the curve minus that line. And don't forget to square. And don't forget your pi. So it's the curve. Can you still remember the curve? 4x minus 2, which is bring it up and square. Don't forget this, the line, y equals 1, and square. And we're still going to in integrate to x because it's towards the x-axis okay so it's going to be pi and it's 2 and 1 and if I'm going to square 4 times 4 that's going to be 16 and if I square this is going to be negative 4 and it's minus 1 it's if I square and it's still dx I just I like to just put a bracket there Right, now I'm going to now I'm going to integrate. So if I integrate, this is going to be 16. If I add 1, then it's negative 3. And don't forget to also divide by that negative 3. Minus x, and that's going to be 2 and 1. Okay, I can simplify it. My 16 is not really enough. I think I'm just going to, to substitute. So if I start substituting, ooh, I'm not going to put that pin. I'm just going to say, okay, uh, I can bring that one down. I think it's better if, if that one is down. So make it 16, or say negative, 16. And if I bring that one, and there's the 3, and if I bring that one down, it's 2 to the power of 3. Minus... Um, 2 okay and then subtract and I'm doing exactly the same I'm going to say 16 
and it's bit, it doesn't matter, I prefer to write the negative there, 16 and 3, and now I substitute 1, and don't forget to the power of 3, and don't forget to subtract 1. Okay. So this is going to, if I'm going to simplify that, I'm just going, this is going to be negative 16, A, B, C, that is 8, 2 times 2 times 2, times 3, it's 24, and that is going to give me, and then I subtract 2. So it's going to be, oh, it seems to me I lost my pi. This, this bracket is going to be, this one is going to be negative 2 and 2 thirds. Okay, let's just simplify this one. Uh, this is going to be negative 16. I will see that 3 because that's just 1. Okay, minus 1 equals, and that's negative 6 and it's like this. Negative 6 and a third. It's actually so nice if it's it's doing this. You don't need to calculate the V. Okay. So there's the pi. So this is going to be a third. This is going to become a plus. Do you see that? And then don't forget. So it's going to give you then after you add that. It's just going to be negative 2 and 2 thirds plus 6 and a third. Okay. And if I do that, I'm just going to get 3 and 2 thirds by units 3. Oh, okay, but now we go to the finals because we want the total volume. So therefore, total volume generated is equal to let's run the right it here is equal to 6 pi you know that's 6 pi plus that 3 and 2 thirds pi and that is going to give me a final of 9 and 2 thirds pi units to the power of 3. That's going to be my final answer.